Good morning, boys and girls. Mrs. Phillips here. We're going to have a great day in math today. It's going to be a little bit challenging. So some of you who are uh, love a challenge will enjoy this today. We're going to be using um, some of the properties that we've learned in math. And one of those is the commutative property. And I have up here commutative property. It just states that the numbers can be in any order. They can move around. I, I like to say they move around in the community, but they still go to the same school. The numbers can move around, but you still get the same answer. So that's the commutative property. We're going to use some of that today. And then we're also going to use the distributive property, which we've been working on the last uh, few days, few lessons. And it says, um, you can expand your larger number, break it into expanded form, <clears throat> and then multiply the other factor by each of those add-ins, okay? So just like this, 5 times 200 plus 10 plus 4. So 5 times 200, 5 times 10, and 5 times 4. And if you break that down, it makes it easier to find the answer to a large problem. Now, we were doing some of this yesterday with um, multiplying with partial products. It's really the same thing, except it's horizontal instead of vertical, okay? So, let's look at some problems today. Now, your lesson 2.8, it's going to talk about, it's got an example on it that uses subtraction, but I'm not going to even go into that using subtraction or using addition because it's just, frankly, too confusing. And we've been learning these two things, and so I think these are the easier ones to focus on. All right, so let's look at our first example. We're going to use the commutative property for this one. We've got 5 times 7 times 20. Okay, now, can you think of two numbers in this equation that would work together better than doing 5 times 7 and then that doing that answer times 20. Well, if you think about it, if I do use my 20 with one of these numbers first, I can use my basic fact and tack on that 0 at the end. Erin, I'm here if you want to put the table out. Yes, we're all here. <laughs> Sorry about the announcement. Maybe it makes you feel more like you're in school when you get interrupted with announcements. All right, so how about if we move these around and we say 5 times 20 times 7, and we're going to focus on doing 5 times 20 first. Now, you may already know. You've already got that number in your mind. But in case you don't, you can use your basic fact. 5 times 2 is 10, and then put that extra 0 at the end. 5 times 20 is 100. And then I can bring the rest of this problem down. And oh my goodness, that's so easy, isn't it? 100 times 7 is 700. Okay? So that's an example of the commutative property, where I just move the numbers around so that I can get two numbers that multiply super easily, maybe even in my head, and then work the rest of the problem. <clears throat> now, we're going to look at this distributive property. Now, we've been working with this, so this should be very familiar to you. And uh, we're going to break apart our larger number, and we're going to say this is 6 times 300 plus 20 plus 1, okay? And then we go a little further, and we'll say 6 times the 300 plus 6 times the 20 plus 6 times the 1. And now, these are fairly easy. We can do our pattern multiplication on these. All right, so our basic fact here is 6 times 3. We know that's 18. Two zeros, tack them on, 
Okay, you got that partial product. See how this is like partial products? And then 6 times 2 is 12. Tack on my 0. 6 times 20 is 120. And then 6 times 1 is 6. And then we want to add these up. 1,800 plus 120 is 1,926. 1,926. Now, if you can't multiply or add this up in your head mentally, then write it down vertically and add it up. The name of our lesson is using mental math. But when we use mental math, as we're learning it, we have to write it down. And one thing I want you to know is when you do your work on your worksheet, you must write your work down and show it. Most of you did a really good job with that, but um, I've had to take off points if you don't show your work. So please show your work, okay? All right. Let's look at another commutative property problem. And let's do... 8 times 23 times 25. All right. Now, let's look at those. Are there any numbers that you can look at and say, hmm, they would be easy to add. They all look kind of hard to add, or multiply, I mean, not add. Multiply. So, let me give you a hint. When you count your quarters, you count 25, 50, 75, a dollar, right? So it's still 25, 50, 75, 100. So four 25s make a 100. So how about we do 8 times 25, and let's do this first. If four 25s make 100, what do you think eight 25s are? You got it, 200. All right, and then we have that times 23. And I know, multiplying 23 is kind of hard, but it's only by two. So could we double that easily in our head to 46? And then tack on our zeros. It's like 2 times 23. We double our 23 to get 46 and tack on our zeros. Okay? Commutative property. That's where you switch your numbers around so that it's easier to do the math in your head and mentally. Okay? Let's do another one with distributive property. We've been doing the distributive property in several different ways with partial products vertically with equations uh, going across. So we've done some in many ways. So this should be more familiar to you. So let's, <clears throat> let's try 9 times 399. 9 times 399. So that's going to be 9 times, we're going to break this apart into its expanded form. Okay? Now we're going to multiply 9 by each of these add-ins. So, 9 times 300 plus 9 times 90 plus 9 times 9. Okay? Basic fact, 9 times, the, nine times 3 is 27. Tack on your two zeros. 9 times 300 is 2,700. Plus, 9 times 9 is 81. Tack on 1, 0. So, 9 times 90 is 810. Plus, 9 times 9 is 81. Now, I can see where this might be a little hard to do in your head. So, all you have to do is line them up vertically. So that you can add them easily. And then you get the answer 3,591. 
don't be afraid to, sh to do this. You don't have to do everything in your head if it doesn't come like that, okay? Part of math is figuring out what to do, okay? All right, now, I have one more problem I want to show you. There's a similar problem on your worksheet today, and we're going to um, work it out. So it's going to be under distributive property, so I'm going to erase this. And it looks like this. Let's do 86 times 50. Ah, oh, we have not learned two-digit by two-digit multiplication yet. So how am I going to do that, Mrs. Phillips? Well, let me tell you. We can do it using the distributive pro property. Uh, we can take our 50. <clears throat> because that has a zero on it, <clears throat> excuse me, because it has a zero on it, we can use pattern multiplication with this. So we're going to do 50 times 80 plus 6. Okay? And that means I gotta do 50 times 80 plus 50 times 6. And you're like, uh, still two digits by two digits. Yes, but what is 5 times 8? It's 40. How many zeros are in our factors? There's one here and there's one here. All I have to do is tack those on, and I have the answer to that. See? Not so complicated after all. All right, and then we want to do 5 times 6 is 30. Tack on my 0. And then I can, we can add that in our head. It's 4,300. Do it mentally, okay? So when you do your worksheet today, 2.8, um, don't pay any attention to the example they give you. That is not how I want you to do it. I want you to do it either using commutative property, switching those numbers around, or using the distributive property, uh, using the expanded form and multiplying each add-in by that number. Okay? All right. Have a fun, math-tastic day, everyone. Bye-bye.